and an engineer who resides in San Jose, California. She was raised in India before immigrating to this country as a student. In addition to being a Stanford graduate in engineering, she is an award-winning plein air artist with command across multiple platforms, including watercolor, ink, charcoal, and digital art. Color harmony, composition, and fearlessness to explore topics and media give her work its unique energy. The absence of a formal art education frees Uma up from norms and allows her to put her emotions on paper and be bold and exploratory in her approach. Uma see, sees commonality between art and engineering. In both, she says, I've found that less is more. And while simple is supreme, it takes a whole lifetime to hone that skill. I am on it. And I so agree with Uma on that, it, uh, the, sim the, the point of simplicity and how to get to that point in your work is something that we all strive for. Uma loves to travel and to get out of doors and into some green space to paint plein air. She teaches workshops in other countries as well as at home in California. She has won numerous awards for her artwork and uh, as we mentioned earlier, she was this year's juror of awards for the CWA's 2023 national show that is on display now at the Harrington Gallery in Pleasanton. Let us welcome Uma Kalkar. Uma. Woohoo! Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, bios are really hard because uh, they lift you way too much in the air. My head is already swollen. I'm glad I'm not wearing a hat because then I wouldn't be able to take it off. But thank you for that warm welcome. Absolutely. You tell me when to proceed and... Okay, well, uh, we are ready. So go ahead and, uh, and get started. Excellent. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, it's 7.20 and you all logged in at seven, which, may, which meant you rushed through dinner. Um, my aim is going to make sure that that effort is well spent and that um, the demonstration will be worth it. I have a couple of watercolor paintings with me to show you. And the reason to show them is to show a specific set of watercolors. These are what I call direct watercolors. These are watercolors I paint without pencil drawing, underlying pencil drawing. I also paint with pencil drawing, but today's demo is going to be direct watercolor in one in one pigment, if you will, if we will decide to call black as pigment. Michelle, if you'll be so kind, would you showcase the other? Spotlight Absolutely. the other, the other Uma. Excellent. So if I look at a small size, I'm gonna bring it closer. What I like to call my paintings are ambiguous, amorphous, with a hint of reality. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sometimes I can be between my own style. This is tighter compared to that. That is loose, happier. Um, uh oh, somebody decided to share screen. Uh oh. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Perfect. And then you could take the same approach to it. Let's go to simpler ones. A simpler ones. The simplest, uh oh, the simplest uh, shapes are something like that. These are direct watercolors, mm -hmm. but the idea of simplification is to simplify to the minimum number of shapes or planes I can um, follow through and then just use those. 
sometimes the image goes blurry. Can you, do you also all see that? That sometimes it's blurry and sometimes it's pretty sharp. Yes. Anyway, and then it can get complex and it can get more complex when you do cityscapes like that. So this is a book stall in Amsterdam. Um, and what I like to play with when you don't have drawings. So drawings help to have accuracy, but if you have practiced your drawing before, what not having the lines or underlying drawing helps you with is it helps you to do live interpretation. Sometimes water doesn't, not sometimes, all the time, water doesn't behave according to expectation. Okay? It does what it wants to do anyway. So your mind becomes open to leverage those marks to do something different with the marks that have already happened. And something like that, this is a night scene, for example. So today what we will be doing will be simpler in the sense that it's going to be a single image Let's see. Does everybody see this photograph? Mm. Yes. So I came out of the SF Botanical Garden. Uh, this was during the pandemic, actually, because that was a couple of outdoor places you could go <laughs> without fear. And I looked up and the street shine, the street, the shine on the street and the tops of the car really attracted me. And it is true that this is according to taste. So somebody would find this clutter of cars to be extremely boring, but this, this juxtaposition of the shapes was what was interesting to me. And this is what we will paint today. And it's purposely done in one color. It's going to be done in one color because there are too many shapes and too many colors and too many choices to be made when I'm painting. So the way I paint um, is just like an engineer. I try to reduce the number of variables so I first suit myself. So I'm going to take out color, yeah? And then <clears throat> the general method I will use for for going about this will be going from general to specific. Yeah, and I'll show you the slide again at the end. These were the pictures. So I painted this in July, 2022, and I happened to take step-by-step -step pictures. And I want you to focus on the first line right here, uh, which says big shapes, medium shape, and any shape. So that's my process. I start with big shapes. I want them to be fluid and my mindset is playful at the beginning. Once that's done, when I'm come touching the paper after this first wash is dry, this wa I'm calling anything that's connected and wet as one wash. It's one big shape that, uh, the, this one big shape um, in step number one. And step number two, I come with staccatos, like broken brush strokes and to just suggest and carve out, like sculpt out the image. The shape sometimes, so this is the bad haircut phase that your painting will go through, where you're still not beautiful, you're looking ugly and there's no hope, but you have to insert hope mentally in it and <laughs> persevere. And the third step is where you start reacting. So where you look at the picture and see what does it need to read and then only put those shapes in. Mm. So in a demo like this, what happens is that I get no audio feedback from people. So it becomes really hard to understand whether I'm just talking, if, if I'm making sense. So can Michelle and Pat maybe unmute one or two people so I understand if people are following? Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. I'm starting off with a quarter sheet of paper. Yes. I'd also like to encourage people to um, type input into the chat and I can read that to Uma so you can get, um, you can make observations or you can ask questions. Perfect. And like a bad girl, I have a palette which is not wet. 
this is saying somebody didn't paint for a long time. That's really bad. I should, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. But fortunately for me, I only need one pigment today. I'm going to use a neutral tint. And what I forgot to tell you was I'm going to use a gouache, white gouache, to recover the sparkle if I miss it. If I, if, if I'm, yeah, if I miss spaces where I should have left white and I don't. So right here is my neutral tint. And it looks super wet and shiny. I'm going to pull it closer. Yeah. So it's and the one in the corner. Of, that's one in the corner right here. Okay. So that's the best thing because uh, there's not too many pigments to talk about. I'm going to just give it an extra dab. All right. I'm going to tell you about my brushes. Oops. And these are my big brushes. Um, this is a size six mop from Da Vinci. Uh, now mops and rounds live in different worlds. I don't know why they can't have standardization across. A size six, for example, these are the size seven, but this is a size seven. These two brushes are size seven in round. And this is a size six in mop. So there is absolutely no equivalence. <laughs> So size six in mops is you're talking about size 20, maybe in round. I especially like mops which hold a good tip because then they give me um, wide variation in shapes and strokes. I'm going to use a flat brush, which is half inch flat brush, uh, sorry, three fourths inch flat brush to carve out the angular shapes in my painting. So just for a minute, I'm going to share the image once again with you so that we can talk through our plan. Because once I start painting, the painting itself, the painting part itself will go pretty fast. So I want you all to squint your eyes. Squint your eyes until it almost becomes a completely black and white image. And once you do that, you will see you have dominantly just three values in this image. You have the street and besides the street, you have something far off. That's a light gray. The street and the street coming close to you is white and everything else is just black. Does everybody see that? Yes. Perfect. Great, so we have a good value map of large shapes that are sprawled across the page. I'm a classic, uh, I use, since we are doing a watercolor painting, we should typically go from light to dark because it's a transparent medium. So I cannot put a lighter color on top of a dark color. So which is why I will always proceed from light to dark. Obviously you all know that, but still. Um, all right, so the first part is to make sure my whites are saved where the streets, where the street is and the tops of the cars are correct because that's the lightest light and the sky. The sky, I might come back and lighten it, uh, I mean darken it just a tad bit. And I would do that because I want the sky to look a little different than the street. Otherwise it is too much white everywhere. I've done these, the reason it's important to do this talking and dissect your painting is because that helps you. Oh, sorry, I have to stop sharing. You have to see my pain. Uh, is because that starts building a plan. Painting is as much doing as much as listening to your brain. So it's, uh, it's not just muscle memory, it's verbal memory and everything else. And I'm, you can see I'm using a big brush and I've made a pool of very low value pigments. Does everybody see that? Yes. Uh -huh. Perfect. Thank you. And the reason I made it low value is because I want to be able to see what I do on the paper. It's there is a shine for me. Yes, but I'm demonstrating. So everybody else needs to see a little bit better too. That's awesome. The Thank you. That's still a little, yeah. 
I have moved the street a little. So I'm going to move the street a bit to the right. What am I doing? When I do this, when I move my brush around, I'm wetting all the areas of the paper that are not to be left white. Yeah. And okay, then so I do you're this. just painting around the whites with water then, essentially. Yes, but these are big shapes of whites. We don't want to be... Uh, we don't want to be minute and detailed. I'm using a big brush, so I'm still sticking with my. And what uh, angle are you holding your paper at? So I'm holding it at about 15 and a half degrees. <laughs> so so very I, I could, slight. Uh, yeah, very slight right now. I often paint vertically, uh, but sometimes I change so people can see the shine on my paper. Okay. Yeah. And this is it. the only time I can I can I can do that because later on I won't don't want to have blooms, and you'll see exactly where. So now I've pre-wet the paper, and you should see the use of having a big brush is all of that puddle of paint I made is now in my brush, in one fell swoop. So I'm not going wow. to need I'm not going to need to load it up again for a long time. See that? Oh, yes, we do see that. You should have your, your reference picture close by. <laughs> because and you want to see the energy in the strokes. Remember, I want to be playful. I just want to look at the big shapes. I have put down water. I have done my big shapes. Now I've started fidgeting with my big shapes wherever I need it, its value to be changed slightly, ever so slightly. This is too thick. Mm. That's mm. Whenever you make extra pigment, if, if that's too thick, take the pigment and put it in another side of your palette, don't waste it. Don't make your water dirty right away. Just put it away and then take clean water and go on, go ahead. That's still too, too dark, okay, no problem. So this way of reacting, you're looking at, looking at what the colors are doing. And now I'm adding, oh, I cut the width of the, street too much, so I, I have to be super careful here, okay? So this talking to yourself, figuring out what is working, what not, is the way you will also paint in my class. I'm just adding. This is too big a shape. Too big a white shape compared to our our reference picture. So, how do I know that? Well, I get that time. I put my brush down and then I look at the paper and look at the composition. Yeah, this is a very big white shape. This is a very big white shape. One of them has to go. So this is a very regular white shape. I need to cut it down. There we go. I cut it down. It doesn't matter how you cut it down. Seriously, it doesn't matter for big shapes. We'll come back and make something out of it. Mm. We would like right to now. know uh, what brand of paper you use. Right now, I'm using a Saunders water. Yeah, I'm using a Saunders Waterford 140 pound okay. uh, rough. And the paper is still wet, but it's, and you remember this first dab I made, it looked pretty dark. But you, ha you have to know that the first values, that the lowest values of your of watercolor dry the most. So they actually lose their value impact as they dry. So sometimes we get scared needlessly at the beginning. Let it do its job for some time. 
let the pigment do its job for some time. It will dry out or it will spread out to lessen its impact. I have changed my brush because while this is wet, I still want a different kind of mark. All my marks are pretty soft. I still want a soft mark, but I want it angular. What am I doing? I'm mixing color and then sometimes when there is too much water in the brush, I'm just touching the, the body of the, the hair where they meet the ferrule to the tip of my palette to take off the extra water. Mm. And this is just a technical thing. This does not make you, make you or break you and make you worse or the better painter. Angular marks are useful. If you're gonna paint something that has man-made objects, landscapes do well with organic shapes because they do have more organic matter, for example. Um, but man-made stuff is very regular. What am I drawing? I'm just suggesting some dark shapes and just making sure that my first wash looks interesting. That's it. My first wash does look interesting, but this end, the bottom end of it is looking like there's a story. I'm going from top to down. I'm like, yeah, okay. I like it. I like it. And then yeah, I'm losing the viewer's interest. I'm losing the viewer's interest. So I'm going to insert some kind of connection. So that the connection in this case, when I talk about collection, I mean visual connection. Visual connection without giving names to what I'm drawing. These are just shapes right now. So this yeah? is very it's abstract at this point then. It's very abstract, true, but it has a purpose. Okay. Now the, the eye was traveling up to here and then having no place to go. Now I have a place to go in. I have a right. place to go down but it goes down and then it exits. It's exiting the painting. All right, here comes the pole then to our rescue. Okay. I'm just making a dark mark so I can lead the viewer back up. And that's how mm -hmm. I picked the composition. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> leading the viewer back up. I'm going to put in the signpost, but I don't care if it is not precise at this point. In fact, I do care that it is not precise. So I'm going to take off something. With another brush, because it's too dark, I'm coming with a thirsty brush. A thirsty brush is not a dry brush. A thirsty brush is one that has no pigment in it, but has been dampened or wet. So you particularly liked having that big pole in the front of that composition because it, it moved yes. the eye around. That's right. But okay. it's too solid in the photo. It's too solid. And there, there are parts of it which I want to highlight. So the parts I want to highlight, since it's a shape that goes throughout, I can change depending on how the rest of the composition works out. I can change which part of this pole to highlight. Okay. So having a common thread of shape helps sometimes. Now this is the part, this, this is too white. I gotta kill that white. I did not like the white shape, so I killed it. And killing is very easy in watercolor. Yeah, it's... The name of the palette, okay. So these standard questions, what is the name of the, I have a PDF for these things. Um, email me and I'll send you this PDF after, afterwards. Uh, with the name of the palette and the name of other palettes because this palette will take one kidney. So if you don't have kidneys to spare uh, <laughs> to pay for the palette, there are other options. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the time when you can work on your playful first ah, wash and I'm gonna go off and dry. 
my paper. So I will be mute for a second. Okay, thank you. Uma, while you're drawing it, can we see the reference photo again? Apparently not. Here, <laughs> there, there we go. Okay. Okay, so um, Uma is uh, muted, but if you, anybody wants to make a comment or ask a question, please feel free. I've got a parking ticket on that spot. <laughs> <laughs> then you may want to buy this painting just to remember that, Joe. <laughs> yeah, it's nostalgic. <laughs> This is interesting to me because every now and then I see uh, sunlight playing off of something uh, like the tops of these cars. And I think, wow, that's pretty cool. But I don't really think about, wow, that would make a great painting. So um, now I'm gonna have to change my perspective a little bit. I I wouldn't force everybody <laughs> to change perspective. In fact, uh, just having different perspectives is kind of fun. <laughs> so I have this drive and you will see that the value variation between these shapes has been incredibly reduced. In fact, only the value here is stronger than the white paper because this part of the painting had dried originally. Hmm. So it's still a little damp, but there's something I need to do before and something I need to explain before we go ahead. And that is a little bit about cars and perspective. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna to simplify today cars to be rectangles, boxes, rectangular boxes. Uh, Somebody wants the reference photo again. I'm hoping you can take a few minutes to actually print this reference photo. Um, um, let me tell, I'll take a screenshot and uh, maybe we can figure out how to put that up on my, my, my feed. Sure, sounds good. But the other thing you can do is if you've got your, your phone right there, you can Take a picture of it on your phone and refer to it if you can't find the one we, mail, we emailed out to you. So the thing about the cars that are up front, um, there's a dip in the road. There's a dip in the road, which means, um, let's say you can see my screen. Yet. Oh no, when you sh that's the problem. When I share, you can't see my screen. Uh, can my drawing be highlighted? Okay, is that true, uh, Joe, or can you show both my reference picture um, and my? I, can, I I won't be able to do it. Uh, let me let me play while well, you keep painting, and I'll see if I can get it done here. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you a concept. So if you had, uh, mm, that's not a good concept. Okay, wait. Uh, you had a river. Yeah, that's also not a very good drawing of a river. The narrow, things narrow as they go far away and then the river expands as they come close, as it comes close to you. Similarly, if you put rectangles here, across the width of the river, that would be a smaller rectangle compared to the rectangle you would put across this part and the rectangle right here would be extremely large, right? So. Okay. <laughs> that that's that's simple, but what I wanted to show within a short period of time, from top to bottom. In this, I went from a small shape to a medium shape to a big shape rapidly. So what happens in a sea where where the cars are parked along a curve? 
this is a curve in the road if the road was level. But in our case, the road is dipping down. So actually the tops or the bottoms of the cars, if all of these cars were the same height, this is what happens with the tops. So now if I start putting, placing rectangles right here, I'm putting a ah, sorry. <laughs> this uh, it's hard to see. But uh, maybe this is very hard to see. This outer silhouette actually tells you exactly in what relation the objects are with each other. The inside doesn't matter as much. Mm. I can tell they're approaching me. Inside could be anything. All it needs is a windshield wiper, something like that. If this were a car right here, that's it. To make it look like cars, as long as the silhouette looks right. So the tops of the cars in the reference picture, if you look at them, if you look at the white tops, can you see my square on yes. the reference picture? Okay, you'll see that that this square, this top is higher, then the next top is lower. The next top is again lower, but where the dip ends, the tops start coming up. So this top, oh, yeah. for example, this top is at the level of something else. I see. And this gives you that information and that's important. If you want to show a painting from a particular place, everybody knows San Francisco has many uh, geographical variations which are important, which, which read like San Francisco only because of these weird variations. So why is this important? Because once we start drawing the dark shapes or trying to save the whites, we will have to know what is the shape, the negative. So if you're thinking about it, think about it as a negative painting. If I'm just going to put in the windshields here, I need to know it's a small windshield, medium windshield, longer windshield, longer windshield, but higher windshield. And that's important. And what, what do I mean by windshield? I mean this, uh, the top of the windshield, this dark line that you see here. Because I can't paint white, but I can paint dark stuff. All right, I spoke a lot. Now I need to do. Shirley would like to know where is the vanishing points for the cars? Excellent point. The vanishing point of the cars is back to sharing. Sorry, I'm gonna share, unshare so many times. The vanishing point is actually somewhere right here. You don't see it, but it's right there. So the tr if, if, if this bus was actually transparent, it's behind would be higher up. It's, it's back surface, would, it's rectangle would be higher up. Okay. It's very, very strange. Okay, we have the basis. And now I'm going to squint my eyes again and look at the reference picture. And start excavating the picture out of it. So the biggest thing that I have is uh, the main thing I definitely needed need for this painting to read like a busy scene is these cars and these cars need to be suggested. This is too complex, so I'm only going to suggest. I'm going to suggest by their by their uh, rear view mirrors. I mean their side mirrors, their tops, and that's it. These small cars right here, I'm going to suggest by their backs. 
And the main and the simplest shape that I'm going to put in first is going to be this bus. Once I establish bus and one more car, it can be bus and this car or bus and that car. And that is enough for people to understand the rest of the mass is something traffic related. That's all they will, we will need to know. All right, I'm making a middle value again in my palette. I move a pigment, I move pigment a lot because when I see the pigment moving, that's when I know what value it is. This is still too light a value. Let's try it. Yeah, too light. That's fine. This works here though. Okay. I'm working towards going, I'm working towards coming to the bus that I want to put in right here. Decisive and firm. The stroke have to mm. have to work for you. They have to give you the feeling that you want the viewer to have once they look at your painting. This is me making marks of buildings. I'm going to use a spray. I'm going to look for the spray. I did lose time. This is a little bone dry. I talk too much. <laughs> so how, what were you using the spray on and why? So I wanted some man-made structure marks far off, but I wanted them to blend, uh, bleed a little. So oh. not super bone dry, but a slight damp would have worked. Paper okay. would have worked. So right now I'm coming with a brush and putting in moisture and then lifting with my dry hand right now. There you go. <coughs> Fantastic. Sorry, I also encourage myself. So if that gets on your nerves, sorry, but I need to be my cheerleader. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. This Vila is good. says you paint like a dancer. I do. Yes. Thank you. I, I mean, I can't dance, but I, I, I can understand the joy. Mm -hmm. I can understand the joy. So this portion, I really like. It's sort of suggesting civilization, yeah? And you let yeah. it be. It's far off. I don't. This left part, when you come to the class, you will realize why I, was, I made sure that this connected, this shape connected. I won't have a dark shape going up and down, but the, the low value shape is enough to suggest a connection. And I'm just gonna show some kind of connections and some kind of vegetation far away. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Hmm. That, is, that is bothering me, but I know I'm gonna put in a tree on the top and the foliage might cover it. So I let it be for now. This shape I had for the tree and I had put in a mid, middle value in it, but I was waiting for it to dry slightly so I could come back and put in some darts which would still blend. This area, I wanted it super dry to put down the bus stop that's close by. <laughs> I let it dry even more. <coughs> Do you ever use a no tan or a value sketch in advance? Absolutely. Uh, yes, I have used a lot. And when people come to my class, they will do a lot of thumbnailing. Um, but to show off, in show off conditions like today, <laughs> I'm not doing any no tan. Uh, as you can see, I also move my 
my brush. So from flat, it goes sideways to it gives you a different mark. Yeah, but don't get too attached to small marks because otherwise you'll stay in that region making a lot of small marks and then you get tight eventually. And we want to avoid getting tight early on. Did you see that that is so soft? And that was soft because it was just right damp. It was just right. Huh. All right, so now I'm gonna go. This this set of shapes looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it needs more variation, but it needs now a brush to come in. But while my pigment is still fresh, I'm gonna go and start delineating my cars a bit. And I'm going to remember my own uh, my own lesson about making sure that the tops of the car start coming up. There we go, come up, that's right. And then the sides of the car, since they are all in the sun. So these are the tops, they go from the top. I, you don't have a white here, the duck, 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 goes down and then lifts up. Good. So when in doubt in places like this, you will have to rely on your drawing. And in my class, I will ask you to bring brush uh, pencil because whatever is not solvable on paper, we will solve on by pencil first. Just having these broad brush marks is suggesting a cue of something. We still don't know what it's a cue of. And then this cue goes and then gets interrupted. It's not connecting back. Mm -hmm. I can see that as I look at it. So I need to connect it back, but the marks have to become medium size and smaller as they recede. Then this, I can start doing a negative shape here. Perfect. All right then. Do you use a sponge or a rag to uh, tap your brush on? I am using this, um, yeah, it's a rag. All right, I got to go a little fast and I have to introduce different marks, meaning marks from a different kind of brush. Mm. I need a lower value brush, a uh, lower value mix too, because I had forgotten to put in the electricity poles, which are vital to showing the dip as well. When we had squinted our eyes at the beginning, we saw that the most of the shapes up front were becoming darker. But if you make all, this entire building shape black, it will stick, it will look like a sticker. So it's best to make large shapes have some kind of interest. If we had color, we would I would add color interest or temperature interest. But since I don't have those variables right now to play with, I'm gonna play with value structure. So that's why I made sure that they go from medium to a lighter to a darker, and that itself makes it more interesting, just that shape. This bus shape is still very wet. So I keep on trying to come to it to deal with it, but it's super wet. So I'm gonna let it be for a bit. Yeah, just now, let me see. Just having some variation in that rectangle of value suddenly makes it pop like something. Like something, we don't know something, we do. But the best part about this is that humans are such great um, great pattern makers. We all have a pattern of car and bus deeply set in our minds. We just know what, what how a bus looks like. Okay. Hmm. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. I'm going to lay this flat down a little bit to look at it. What are the main issues? I need, this is too empty. 
if this is white dominant, that has to be black dominant to balance a little bit. So I do need my tree that I've kept. Why did I keep the tree last? Because I can now maneuver the height of it. It's an organic shape. I don't mind it any which way. I can't make it the same height as this. That would make a third board, boring sh shape. What do I mean by third? I have this Tom, Dick, and Harry rule. Three shapes can't have the same level. So one, same level. Second level, the, sh the tree has to go and do something else. Mm -mm -mm. It still has to lean in. Fine. Just putting in a hmm. shape of a tree. Pat would like to know if you're squinting the whole time that you're painting. Sometimes I am, but with a tree, I'm not. I just love playing with trees too. So right now I'm just looking. This taller, good, does it? Yeah, maybe a little bit, that's enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm responding, I'm at this stage responding, like what does the picture need? Where does the bow? If I cover all of these spaces, I won't be able to see through. If I don't, if I'm not able to see through this tree, I'm not going to be able to convey to somebody that there is something beyond. And this wet and wet painting already takes away distance. That's, that's the problem. The reason why people don't always work with it is it takes away the feeling of distance. So the way to give in feeling of distance is to make sure there are pockets of distance or pockets where you can see multiple layers or multiple planes. When I say plane, I mean far ground, middle ground. So once you establish that, you establish distance. There's one bad thing I'm doing right now. I'm getting so tied up with my beautiful tree that I want to play with it and bring down its branches and go into the, all the squiggly, nice, okay, stop it. Oh, I have to stop, yeah. If I get into the jewelry stage too soon, I'm going to ruin it. I gotta stop it. As soon as I put the shape, it did balance this white shape, but this shape is not connecting to this shape. So there's a big disconnect here with my mind. So you have to, yes, answering back you have to squint and unsquint all the time are the shapes talking to each other are the shapes making sense and that's right now that's connected good but then this building is looking empty and we don't know what it's doing so let's put a dark value but we don't want it dark so come back with clean water and lift it just a tad yes good job and then make mm, nice very good mm. Okay, that shape started looking slightly boring. We need to insert more man-made objects right close to it. Okay, good job. <sighs> what am I letting? What am I let, letting my mind do? I'm gonna take a breather. I think I've worked uh, too much. I need to step away from it a bit. I need to step away. Start putting in the other other things that look like a car and traffic just for the time being. So I can take a break and then come back to see what it is. Oh, beautiful. I'm giving myself a break. I'm giving myself a break by drawing. But how am I drawing? Oh, the electricity poles are easy. They're just sticks. Let's draw them for now. Take a break. So we also have to pace ourselves like that and painting uh, because it's exhausting. It's exhausting painting in um, direct watercolor mode because there's no drawing underneath it. There will be mistakes, there will be errant marks and you have to constantly think, how can I leverage this errant mark? How can I form it into something else? Mm. I'm gonna rest, I'm gonna look at it and come back. 
the space is looking empty. It has nothing to tie it because the pole vanished. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you see yeah, that the yeah. pole vanished. All right. That's, that's, that's not a problem. We can recover that. But do I really want to make the whole pole dark? So I want the pole to look like it's ahead of these abstract cars. So there, every time there's a plane change, meaning one thing is ahead of the other, and there's a real plane change, there's a value change. So this needs to be darker here. If I make it as dark as this car, I shouldn't have connected the car to the pole. That was my first mistake. But now that I have, I have to make sure that the pole becomes lighter temporarily around this car. Then it becomes darker again here, right here because it has to be ahead of this shape. All right, we can do that. Huh. Yeah, we play, we distort as per will and as per first, what did I do? I gave it a base, I gave it a base and then I'm gonna let that, all right, good job. Hmm. It's connected, but the value chain is just minimal. Yeah. So uh, tell me again, why did you lighten the pole where it's next to that car? I don't know. I'll be right back, right with you. Okay. Ooh. Uh, if I had made it the same color or the same value as the car, I wouldn't have been able to distinguish. It would have looked like there was a billboard stick or there was a, a oh, post that I was see. sticking to the pole. So I right. couldn't have distinguished what, what it was. And right. if I did lose that, I would lose distance. So last time you painted a rural scene for us and this time it's a city scene. Do you have a preference between the two? No. I don't, I don't. All right, this is at a stage where it needs a little bit of drying. There are some things that we have lost. I've lost a little bit of fun on the right hand side. So I'm gonna go with some thicker paint are we still this, in uh, step two would you say i'm still in step step two yeah i'm gonna put in a dark shape but i don't know what it is so i'm gonna let it be amorphous but it does need a dark shape this needs to something this is too bright this has to go this white has to go but not so much. Good. Mm -hmm. mm, that looks good. Now I'm experimenting at this time. I don't know if it needs a spray, but I want to see if a little bit of grimy texture can be developed. Maybe, maybe not. Mm. This is an, I don't know about you, but I can see cars here. My brain fills that up. So, I'm going to make sure that I focus on pulling this part out to look more lively. Right now, that part is looking interesting. That part's looking interesting. But between them, it feels like a divorce. So I need these two parties to start talking. Um, and I need to connect them visually. Then if the story becomes too interesting and this becomes the dud, then I touch it. Otherwise, no. Now, right off the bat, I don't like this sign post, so I'm just gonna kill it slight. The way I killed it is by softening the edges. The way I softened the edges was because I could see there was a bead on the paint. Um, so, just, okay. If I want something else, I'll come back a little later. Any questions so far? This is a good time for me to answer questions or to demo anything on the site separately. So Pat was asking um, if you do a value study before you do a painting typically. 
Yes, I do. She's right. And like a so thumbnail or something like full size like this? Uh, usually it's a thumbnail. Okay. Um, and because we don't have time right now to do all of it, I ask people to squint their eyes. That squinting was their figuring out which pieces need to be. Gotcha. What am I doing here? I just took dirty water. I just wanted to look at the value of water. How are we doing on time? Uh, let, let me see. Um, it's 8.12, so um, you've still got about 45 minutes. Okay. Uma, you, you, were, you were saying just a minute ago that you're going to liven up the area around the bus is that going to be your focal area or do you develop yes. the focal area as you're painting based on how your marks are coming out did you know i guess i'm asking did you know ahead of time where your focus was going to be i did know ahead of time that the focus was going to be the bus there are many many times where my brush flick goes wrong and i have to change so that happens a lot right now what's competing Right now, my problem set, I, I know you didn't ask this, but now telling everybody, I have two problems going on. My problem is this car became too big. This car shouldn't have connected. If this car was smaller, it wouldn't have connected to the pole and I would have had a nice white dot here so that I could have moved my eye around with whites too. So that's a problem. This dark shape and that dark shape are becoming equal in weight. Mm -hmm. So I need to figure out a way to mute this a little bit. So that that that's later. I'm going to make sure I make the bus tip top and then start muting this. Then I have a disconnect. I can I can I know Judas. I mean the street on Ju. So you're on Lincoln and that's Judah going up. Um, there's a building right here and the cars start here, but there is so much disconnect right now. I need to make this figure that I have here. It's a very small figure. But I need something more to show me connection from that side of the road to this side. So that is a little blank space that's worrying me a lot. <laughs> I might employ this dark shape and make sure that the negative shape, it engulfs the car, the tops of the cars, and makes the cars come alive at the back. That could be my first Thing I would do. In fact, let's start that that way. Alice mm. says she doesn't have a question, but she just wants you to know that she thinks the perspective is nice on this. Thank you for your perspective, Alice. <laughs> hmm. Now I have to be a little tight. When I'm a little tight, my fingers move closer to the federal. Otherwise, I paint from this length. Now I'm tight, I want small marks, and I'm gonna use my pinky to anchor my hand down. Otherwise, fun, until now, there was no hand on the paper. Hmm. Sometimes I have, I'm gonna lay this flat, okay? But tell me if it shines for you. Oh. Mm, this has to go up. I have to put a V down. It has to go, you cut that. And then I got that, good. That's three cars. One, two, and three, okay? And then the wheels, wheels, but just a little bit because the rest of it turns. I'm gonna let it turn. The wheels are small. This is the next car. This is the next car. Needs it. Right. So it is true, you will have to do a little bit of drawing practice, your car drawing practice. If you have not drawn, the rest I'm gonna let them go. Let them go. This is a shape that needs killing. Yeah. So that's 
low value shape was becoming way too long and boring. So I killed it by just connecting this dark shape to this dark shape. It needs to be nothing, some abstract mark. I just didn't want my eye to leap. I need the eye to come down. Okay, here we go. Small brush strokes have small brush strokes. Yeah. Okay. Need a lower value. Need a lower value. Two, two. Looking for thickness. Good. Small marks. I'm going to suggest some cars far away. Good. And then as we come closer, there are wires. There are wires between. Great. And then there are other cars close by. This bus needs a little bit more loving. I'm going to get a little tight. Okay, great. Some dark marks. Beautiful. I'm going to pull it closer to you to see how these dark marks help to pull things together. Mm -hmm. And now the issue is that this tree looks really boring. You can't tell it's a tree because it does, it has a very sharp edge. It's a sharp edge, but we need to make it unsharp. But the time's gone because it, everything is very dry. So I need to make sure that the edges look amorphous. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Need a lighter touch, lighter touch. There is a melee of cars here. We don't need to be specific, but we just need to suggest the melee. Okay, good. Nice. I'm gonna put it down now because I don't need to show. So issue with doing a demo is it's I created a problem, isn't it? But that's fine. We can always recover from a problem. Every time your brush stroke comes in, it creates another shape. My brush stroke came in here and it created a boring shape. So I went in and created another man-made shape by putting in one more brush stroke. So as long as you know what your brush stroke is going to do, put that extra brush stroke. But if you get to a point in your painting where you're just fiddling because I don't know what to do, that's the time to walk away. Good. This is important. So how do you define a boring shape versus some other kind of shape? Come to the class. I'll teach you. <laughs> Good job. <clears throat> That was good, huh? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, I take it back. I cannot promise, but I can tell you my definition of and how to come up with your own definition of interesting shape. And a little bit of it has to do with you trusting yourself. Do you have the guts to say this is interesting? Do you have guts to say to go to a museum and say this is not interesting, this is interesting? Yeah. Once you do, you will have your pattern. 820. So I'm going to make use of white gouache to get the headlight, headlights of my bus. And I had already poured a little bit of gouache, it's a little dry, but I'm wetting it just to see if the bus pops. If it pops, if it becomes the center main stage player. Huh. Then maybe I don't need the rest of the job. What else does it need? It does need this, but that has to be a low value, okay? Sorry. Hmm. What are the other white marks I need? All right, a line, maybe. 
of two, okay. Is there a difference between the white gouache and the titanic white watercolor? Uh, I will look it up and tell you. So technically titanic white is the over, uh, is opaque and can um, cover. But with gouache, I felt that the consistency is so thick that I, I can go, it's thick, but still runny enough that just with a little bit of water, I can get really useful dabs, useful meaning with a lot of covering power. Okay. So it's just a personal preference. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm looking for a repetition of whites that I might like. And that is completely as per my liking. Mm -hmm. And you will have to develop your set of, this is too white, this is too white, I need to take off. If it's too white, I need the white to be a little dirty. Now that I have this white, but I can't take it off elegantly. Okay, that's good enough. That is very sharp. I need to come on over it. Mm. So as far as the painting goes, I'm pretty happy with this. Now there are issues that we will start addressing and we'll start looking for. The issues are, I see these electricity poles and I see the wires, but I don't know where the wires are going. Like there's like fictitious wires going where? I need at least one electricity pole to justify <laughs> placing all these wires. All right, that's enough. And that's and I'm spoken have... like an electrical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> We have an issue here. I'm going to try and we have two poles of the same height doing nothing. So I'm going to try and wet the area to see if I can lift it. So I've just put in water, my dirty water, and I soaked it and see if I can lift it. Yeah, that can lift the pole. <coughs> so I don't need to lift the entire pole. All I need to do is make this more interesting with respect to that. Two similar things. They're not uninteresting, but just they add peace. They often having something similar often adds peace, which is why you have patterns in even many crowded places. You use patterns to calm down, depending on what pattern. Uh, I'm stepping back just in my chair. I'm leaning back to see what the issues are. So the issues I see is this white space, when I squint, when I squint and look at my own painting, this white space is too big. The, the windshield of the car, oh, let me share screen. The windshields of the car come up and kill the white space. So this is the only white space. Right? These windshields are coming up. Mm. Right, so I'm gonna use that too. But now I have another problem. So what's my problem? If I use a black windshield right here, I'm gonna connect it with this car. So this car has generated a lot of error, a lot of issues, isn't it? <laughs> mm. So let's think, what are we gonna do? I need to cut this white space. Yes, I do. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna convert this car into a windshield and then I don't have to worry about it. Here we go. So that's the top. So that's the top of the car. So this is the windshield. There it is. This is the big bada boom windshield of this big car right here. Which means the back car's windshield should also be visible. So car, body, body, windshield. Okay, that works. How will that work? The tops are usually more dark. The bottoms have a seat or something like that that shows through it. 
Now I need some other stuff to make it look like a car. I am going to do exactly that and I want to put in. Woohoo! Did you see that? <laughs> that works. Yeah. Okay, let's put in our side view, side, uh, the side mirrors that we hadn't put. Oh, that is something called back pocket margin. When you design something, you always don't give away all the features. You keep some so that later on you can use them. Good job. Now I need to soften this. All right, good. Ooh, that is perfect. It works because that also makes this stop above this stop. So I got the dip. Ta da! Two problems solved in one. I promise you, I did not make up, I had not planned on having this problem. Well, it's okay. fun to see you solve problems on the fly. <laughs> Mm. Mm. that's a boring shape okay cut it that be made another boring shape mm. but I think I can live with that boring shape so I'm going to live with it I'm just going to make define this car top just a bit for the one car that's close to me just a bit the antenna good job Let me make so sure. here's another question in the chat um, hmm. John says, in the initial stages, you mentioned a white space was too large. What criteria hmm. do you use to evaluate whether an area is functioning to the whole? If we made a thumbnail with only two values, By the way, Pushpa loves the way you instruct yourself with a friendly voice. <laughs> Okay, so this is my internal pattern. There's another problem here, but I'll put it, yeah. This, this is looking not so bad. This is looking engulfed, so I want, so I'm thinking of it in my mind like this. This is too broad, this is too broad, I can't, uh, this is equal weight as this almost if I ignore this part um, and that's boring so I'm kind of accumulating all the white space weight of the white space and seeing if the weight of the black space and white space is equal if it's too equal it's kind of boring in this case the white is a little engulfed and trapped so I need an out so I've taken a white gouache right now and try I'm gonna try and give it an out okay this is a good shape according to me. Beautiful. And then, if this is true, if this is too boring a white shape, then I should be able to kill it by something. I should be, so I'm coming with a black paint to see if I can kill it. Hmm. That's a very boring cut. Make the cut interesting. Okay, that's a good cut. Okay, now that shape is good. And that's exactly how I make my decisions. So I'm squinting and I'm looking and I'm training, I've trained my eye to look at these extreme, uh, extreme values. It is true that I have set up this problem with already, with a reference picture, which has already solved a lot of issues. So I would suggest if you're taking reference pictures, take multiple reference pictures at a spot and then once you figure out which ones you prefer, am I not showing the screen? 
which ones you prefer, you will start realizing what your pattern of liking is, of shapes. Mm. Um, so like they say, salt to taste while cooking. So shapes to taste while painting. Too. <laughs> I don't know if this was useful. But that white is required. It's too trapped. If it was not too trapped, then I would need an opening here. And why would I need an opening here? I need my eye to move. Your eye moves either along the darkest stars or the lightest lights. Yeah. So this would still work because your blacks are connected. But just the shape is too tight for me. So I this composition would still work if the top of the blacks were lightened, which is exactly what happens in this mm. composition. I still have airiness. I still feel how I, my body reacts. Ah, still airy, still ways to go. These. So there's a question in the chat here from Alice. Is there still a problem with a pole and car top as there is a black spot inside the pole? No, I don't care. I absolutely don't. That's not the major player. It's a supporting player. It will do the job of supporting player. If I fix it now, which we can because we can always experiment. It's going to be too literal for me. It's too literal. Okay, here we go. Here goes nothing. Damn it. Okay. It's playful. This mistake's playful. But okay, let's find out. It's too literal, too proper. <clears throat> Too tight. And now, so the question then, everything brings up a question. You solve something, then another question comes up. What is too proper? What do I mean? Why do I like half hazard? If I like half hazard, why do I care about this tops being higher? Okay, so I'll explain it to you the way I see it. By the way, the issue, the newest issue is that the trees, because there was so much water, they lightened up way too much. So the tree got pushed back. It is not ahead of the building, which can be darkened and recovered, but we'll have to see what our time is. Okay, so we still have a, a, a 20 minutes. Yeah, good. That's, that's, that's good. Sorry, I was just saying good as in the, in the decision was right. Yeah, okay, let's please. Okay, that is still ahead, but not quite. So the branch has to get darker. But not all of it, because that will be loud. No, it needs to be loud, a little bit louder. Mm. Just a tad here and there, and then back off, back off, back off, back off. Okay. Uh, what was the uh, thing I was saying that then becomes the question of oh, what, what do I care? Okay. If, why do I care about the perspective so much if I, I don't want to have this so proper? I've already denoted the value. By value change, I have denoted plane change. Yeah, If it were melting into one another, it was the same color. It was completely ambiguous. Of course, I would come back and clean up the edge. There is edges. There is values. There is color. There is um, scaling, meaning big or small. All of these things can introduce plane change, feeling of difference between edges. We don't have color today. Okay, so value is all we have, value and, and edges. When this edge had dried, it had dried sharp. So I already had an edge contrast. I had a value contrast. I know humans know what this is. This is a pole because of the sign we already interpreted like that. So there was no ambiguity. I, and I know because it's so close to me, it's, it's so big and wide and thick that I know that this is closer to me. So the user would fill up that ambiguity, yeah? Plus, if this was the center stage actor, then I would make it neater. I want it to look like second place. I don't want it to give the trophy of attention. So I make it look like 
suggests I want it to play its part, but then I want the interest because of his imprecision, the, the eye of the onlooker to move away because it's not exactly completely interesting and it's not completely reading. I could draw, put on the number plate and stuff like that, but that would just make it far more interesting. Hmm. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to take off the tape and then look back at it. And I will tell you right off the bat the issues that have, have, to, have happened tonight. The issues are these values are too light. I'll show you the one I painted this afternoon at 4.30. So I timed myself in 4 to 4.30. And I do like how these poles melt into something, you know? Mm. Um, I like the car is far away from the pole. It did not create a problem then, but I've lost that. And I wanted also to show you that I want us to get comfortable with this level of finish. If we want to do direct watercolors and want to concentrate on big shapes. Now, when you are looking or evaluating this painting, and I also do tight paintings, yeah, but I'm demonstrating direct watercolor. And the usefulness of this is plein air. I go out and in 30 minutes, I can execute this, come back. It's not the beautiful painting I'll come back with because I have spent 30 minutes outside looking at the light. Even when I have just painting from a reference picture, I will have this whole 30 minute of study that will back my painting when I come back home, which helps. I, I especially like this lost and found bits here. Mm -hmm. uh, we can either look at my sketchbook or we can problem solve on a piece of paper, up to you, but I'm gonna take off the tape right now. When you come to juicy watercolors, this is not a painting we will do. We will do something simpler. This looks easy, but it's quite hard to abstract and figure out which shapes to put down. Um, also, it requires everybody's drawing to be top notch. We will do a little bit of drawing practice, but we will gain all the skills required in a wet and wet painting, especially, and how to triage a scene, how to make a complex scene simpler, but it still won't be this complex. This is complex because it has different kinds of perspective. The vanishing point is a very big question. Yeah. Is the vanishing point up there as the cars become smaller or the vanishing point here, right here? <laughs> How many vanishing points does this, does this have? Um, okay, I've taken off and I'm taking off all the things besides it too so I can evaluate the painting as is. Yeah, there's a big problem here. The darkest darks have actually lightened up. The pole is just not dark enough. I'm going to go fix that. I do need the pole to be dark enough. Yep, let's do that. Let's do that. Could. But the pole is looking very stoic and one-sided. So I'm going to give it some kind of embellishment so it doesn't have just one shape. So I'm going to add another sign on the right-hand side just to add some kind of flavor to it. Maybe a bird on it, yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. That yeah, made it more interesting. Well. Mm, what else? This sign is now looking incomplete because I added attention to this stuff. Now I'm going to expect more information here. Hmm. So every every solution brings up with it with it it's its own set of problems, and you have to stop until only when you say I can live with that. Okay, 
that signs read a bit more, but it is still too light. I'm going to lighten it. I'm sorry, darken it. Ta da! Come on. Okay, good girl. Okay, interesting. That part definitely looks interesting. Good. This part now suddenly starts looking boring. Mm. All right, so this dark shape, this dark shape kind of connect. This looks nice. The right hand side goes nowhere. I need a dark shape, in, but not too dark so it doesn't come and play with the my pole again. No, just hints of vegetation. Good. Okay, that worked. That needs to darken up a little. Why do I need to darken? I need to explain this to myself because if I can't, then I'm not touching it. The thing is, this is a beautiful shape. Big shape, medium shape, small shape. I need to go through a medium shape, but I'm very scared I'm going to ruin it. So what? Good, 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 good. I've put in a shape and I'm now just coming in with wet water, a wet brush to diffuse that shape out around. Don't go to the pole, woman. Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay, good job. That is starting to hold down the middle ground, but it's very distinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs a little bit of character, man-made character. Good. Okay. In We are back in business. Now... Last touch, I promise last touch to the bus and then we, we say this is done. This is too much, too much, too much. Feel that you should get in your hands is it should be tacky. There should be a tackiness to your paint sometimes. Maka. Too short. I'm going to let that go. Go back. I would have darkened this later, but I'm going to sit with it. I'm very happy with these abstract marks. They're exactly that. I'm looking at my reference picture and saying amorphous, man made. Amorphous shapes on the top, man made shape on the top. Don't say what it is. People will fill it. Maybe a line here, but I'm not going to let that be. Mm. No, let that go. Let that go. That's it. All right. That's amazing. Zelda Everybody says, I like how you talk to yourself out, out loud, Uma. That is really helpful. Uh, thank that you. is really helpful to understand your creative process. Thank you. You're welcome. If we have time, I have my study book to show off, or I could use the back of the paper to paint and demonstrate something if something is of well, interest or all. We have uh, 15 minutes, so um, up to you. So the I, I did a demonstration with Canadian Society of Watercolor Painters and I had my sketchbook with me and I was ashamed to show it. And I realized after I showed it that people actually connected with the fact that sketchbooks are supposed to be an experimental research lab and therefore should have a lot of crappy pictures in it. <laughs> So here is my crappy pictures sketchbook. It also has some good pictures, but there's a ton of crap. And I'm hoping that just showing it, whether you come to my workshop or not, just by showing it gives you the permission to collect a lot of crap. 
um, and it is a required. I think it's like it's like warm up. Yeah, if you don't warm up, you are not going to be able to run, and if you don't do your running, you won't be able to do the marathon. So it's these are all the stages. Uh, that's on December twenty fifth. So I I unpacked gifts and I painted that. Went out and painted that. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of experiments and try to see if the experiments work. Um, and I've been teaching a class in January about um, painting only in low light conditions. So it was not daylight scenes. We will use a lot of daylight scenes in uh, juicy watercolors, but this particular class was only about night scenes or very early morning scenes. Um, so these are some of the works I did for that class. Um, that's my son and he was waiting for mommy some many years ago. Now he's taller than me. Mm -hmm. um, and these are, so like this one is direct watercolor and I can bring it close to you and, it, and you'll see that it's about balancing organic shapes with man-made, with linear shapes that give you the feeling of man-made and uh, man-made structures versus natural structures. And for things like that, with a, with a lot of perspective required, I will draw. And more than draw, I actually put a grid down. I mean, not the square grid, but I, I knew my vanishing point was here and I knew my second vanishing point was higher. You can see maybe pencil marks right here. And I actually drew the lines just to make sure that my breast, my, that my breast stroke never went awry. Oh, what a beautiful uh, eye. <laughs> this, oh. this, I, I do skies for fun. I just, th those are easy. I wanted to sh use show lightning. Um, that's what I was trying to train myself, how to do lightning without white. And uh, So somebody w w is asking in the chat, how do you develop that internal voice as to what looks good and what doesn't? I think that's really yeah. a, a tricky question, but I, I find that yeah, most yeah. artists do yeah. have that. Everybody has that. But I, when I teach my master class, I tell them that the bravery is in you trusting yourself. And when it means what it means by trusting yourself is you'll have to trust when you say this doesn't look good. Which, when you say it doesn't look good, then you have then the next question you have to answer. So what will look good? You have to make edits. And two, and the and the second thing I find people who don't that they don't do that they know very well what doesn't look good. But when something looks good, they're very shy about not, not talking to themselves and telling them that, that that's kick ass. So if you're really brave, you have to be brave enough to criticize yourself and to celebrate yourself. It's work done. <laughs> and then you did it. And if you did it the second time, it was not a, a lucky mistake or something like that. It just happened because of all the work you put in. Uh, so this is a very, I don't know. I, this was going to be an easy painting for me. I have no idea how I failed at it. I drew it. I even made a thumbnail of it. I had a plan and it's tight and it's boring, unfortunately. And then when you're frustrated, I painted this. This has a lot of technical issues but there's joy in it. It's not a no pencil. And this is a view of Mumbai, the newer part of Mumbai at night. So there's, there's a road under us. And um, of course the buildings are lopsided. I mean, in an earthquake, this, 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 this city wouldn't stand, but I can get the essence. And in this case, I'm losing the plot. Like, what is the point anyway? So I repeat it again and again. Um, to answer Barbara's question, yes, I do paint in the car a lot. And something this small is also useful. So if a quarter sheet or a half sheet or a full sheet, full sheet 
starts becoming daunting because it's a direct watercolor. I would very much suggest even one, I mean, this is even smaller than a quarter, this whole page in a smaller size. And I would also recommend that you start your big shapes with an angular brush actually. Hmm. Interesting. Because, uh, and a, or a dagger if you can, if you have one, because the dagger will have the flourish of a round brush, but will also give some sharp edges. And we are so used to seeing sharp edges and man-made objects, just having that feeling, the sharp edges give you a feeling of control. So, so that's, that, that's my suggestion if you're starting off with direct watercolor. Excellent. <laughs> Do we want to go to my face? A spotlight my face instead of the paper. Sure. Questions, anybody? Please unmute okay. yourselves. It's really, I'm really scared that I've either driven you away or Go ahead and uh, unmute yourselves and um, talk with Uma. Hi, Uma. You, Hi. You've been working professionally as an engineer. Uh, how, when, how did you acquire all the skills while working full time? Madness. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a level of madness. Without this, I would be extremely mad. Yeah. So this is my medicine. I I can be a terrorist. I am a terrorist mother. My children will attest to that. So if <laughs> they will all want me to paint longer. But um, so I was I stuck to it. It made me feel better. It was like exercise. It was a very very selfish activity. It was completely for myself and my joy, which is how I stuck with it the longest, because there's no money in it. There was no money in it. Uh, what I found, it was timely in 2010, Flickr came about, which meant I could post my pictures online and then people around the world, whenever get, they got time, they could comment and they would comment. What that meant was because I did not have a community of artists around me, this online community of artists became a support structure without feedback or encouragement. I wouldn't have kept it. So, and then once they encourage, then you look at their work and then you see, oh, how does he or she do that? And it keeps on feeding you. I have set a schedule at home, of, of course, because of this habit, but it helps uh, for the family to support the habit if it's a predictable pattern. If they know Thursdays is when mommy needs them, all the ducks are aligned and everybody's schedules are aligned to enable me. And that helps um, because random nature, they can't support me either. I mean, it's too much stress on them otherwise. Thank you. That's brave of you. Thank you, Zelda. Thank you so much for sharing tonight. This has been a delightful demo. Um, I think we've all learned a lot about your process, about you, about uh, the joy of painting. Uma, I'm so excited about the workshop. I, I can't wait to spend two days with you uh, watching the remarkable painting that you do. Thank you so much. I just wanted to clarify um, that the workshop will make it simpler. This was a challenging painting, but you will go through the motions of breaking it down and you will gain those skills. They might not tie up at the end because these are certain skills that have taken a few years, right? But you will have them at your disposal after the workshop. So I welcome you uh, to attend it and I will make, I'll keep it a safe space. I will push you, but not break you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's we, really we, encouraging Uma we appreciate I, that. I would love to join your workshop and uh, I, I'm not a great artist I'm not an advanced artist but I would love to join you and see how to self-talk myself 
and say, oh, this is all right. Uma did that. I can follow her. Excellent. I can't tell who it was speaking, but thank you so much. This is Pushpa. Pushpa. Thank you, Pushpa. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. It was an honor. It's an honor CW has bestowed on me uh, by giving me this chance not only to demonstrate, uh, but to do this workshop and to be able to judge a national show's awards. And whoa, that, that was a big honor. So thank you, CWA. Right. Lucky to have you, Bloom. Lucky to have you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and uh, be sure and get down there and see that national show before it's over, and be sure and get signed up for Uma's workshop. We don't want to miss it. Thank you. Thank and good you. night. Good, show. good night. Good night.